a blessing to be able to walk with Jesus. Yes, yes, the one who gave his only begotten son so that we may ever have life eternal, life eternally. It is good to be able to thank God for what he's done for you. It's a blessing to be able to be here and to know that you're here and to know who kept you here. And know it wasn't anything that you've done, but because of the grace and mercy and the love that God has for us, and the promises that he has for us, that he shall always honor his word. Amen. 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 It is a blessing to be here today uh, before you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Reverend Freeman, who is my biological brother. Uh, as he said, folks think that he's the oldest. And probably because of that, because he's been pe preaching so long, <laughs> and that he has a spirit of an older person, <laughs> which is nothing wrong with that. Um, and I don't have that old man spirit like he has. So, uh, but God be the glory. Uh, I want to thank the leadership here at Mount Zion for allowing me to speak today. It is a blessing to be able to come back from where you started to be able to come back home and to be able to bring the word of God. Um, that speaks volume for how God works in your life. Because these folks know who I am and where I came from. And for them to be able to see the changes that God has made in my life, that they will allow me to stand here behind this desk to bring the word of God is just a blessing. And I just want to thank you, Pastor, for having the uh, grace to allow me to stand here in your place today. Uh, just, it's just a blessing. I really appreciate you, Brother Doc Freeman, to First Lady uh, Selena Freeman, my sister. Love you, dear. Bless you, and to my wife, uh, who is my ride and die. And as I said some weeks ago, uh, we've been through a lot, but because of the grace of God, we're still together. It wasn't because I was all of that. And because she was all of that. But because God saw something. And he said, thou shall be together. And so we thank God for what he's done for us. What he has blessed in our lives. He's taken us from here and moved us down to Chapel Hill. And he's been a blessing there. So we're just thanking God for all that he's doing, all he does and all that he's doing. Can't thank him enough. I just get so filled when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he has done. My soul says, yes, hallelujah, yes, thank you, Jesus. And I just know that God has a blessing for Mount Zion. That when, when he finished with Mount Zion, it's going to blow some folks' minds. Oh. When he finished with Mount Zion, it's going to blow some folks' minds. But the main key on how he's going to be able to do that is with the love that you all show to this community and to each other. Yeah. And so I think God gave me a word for you guys today. We're going to try to let God use us. Yeah. And we're going to step out of the way. We're going to ask God to... Be in front of us, move us behind the cross, so he may do what he does. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Fathers, once again, I come to the throne of grace to say thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for this day. Father, I ask that you anoint me. Father, I ask that you allow these ears to hear yes. you, Lord, Father, and these lips to clay speak. Father, we ask that you hide me behind the cross that they will see all of you and none of me. We ask these things in your sweet son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're coming from, again, from 1 John 4, 20. 19 through 21, we shall read as follows. We love him because he first loved us. If a man said, I love God and hate of his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he's seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? And this commandment was we from him, that he loveth God, love his brother also. As Christians, the only reason we love at all is because he first loved us. The Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses required that a man love his God and neighbor. But the law could not provide or produce this love. How could God obtain this love with the righteousness that was required? Well, He solved this problem by sending his only begotten son to die for us. Such a wonderful love draws our heart out in him and we said you bled and died for us and we will now live for you All right. if I could topic, give you a topic today it would be 
What love got to do with this? Tina Turner sung a song some years ago, and the second stanza of that song said, Oh, oh, what love got to do with this? What love but a second-hand emotion? What the love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? There have been times in your life that someone has told you that they love you, and you have done everything that you could for that person to show them that you love them. But it seems the more and the more that you do, the worse that they act. And the more you try to love them, the more they go this way. But you know that God put something in you to share with that person. But that person doesn't understand that. And so what we do, we continue to love them. We continue to love them. We try to show them the spirit of God, but they don't want to hear what we have to say. So then we get upset with the person and get an attitude. We want to turn our back on them, but we forget that God loved us first. And if it had not been for him, where would you be? Where would you be if God didn't show his love to you? Those times when you didn't have what you needed, but God gave it to you. And he gave it to you because he loved you, because he promised you that he would be your all in all. So church, I'm here to tell you, when it don't look good, it's for the good. Because God has something for you. But what he has to do, sometimes he got to take you through some things. He got to shake you and wake you because he needs you to understand that he's still there. He's still in the blessing business. But we kind of get in our own self. We get into our own feeling and we want to turn our back on God. And once we turn our back on God, he still loves us. Even in the midst, when we turn our back on God, God says, I still got you. I'm going to let you feel the way that you think you are. I'm going to let you have your pity party for right now. But what I need for you to do is don't forget what I've done for you. Right. See, God ain't got to remind you because what he does, he, he wakes you up every morning. Yeah. He allows you to go to that old piece of job that you go to. He allows you to have that house you have. He allows you to have that car that you have. But you still got an attitude with God because he hasn't given you what you wanted at that time. But the love of God still keeps you where he needs you to be at. And for that, we should be thankful. Because, see, God has given us everything that he promised us. God said, I would give you what you need. He never told you that he's going to give you what you want. But, see, the wants are the extra piece of his love. When he gives you something extra, that's the extra part of his love that he has for you. Right. How many of us have, have enough love in our body that we will give our only begotten son to save somebody? My, my, my. That ain't nothing but love. My, my love. God loved us so much that he said, you know what? I'm not going to allow you to leave this earth without having the opportunity of being saved. And for that, I'm giving my son so that he can die and yeah. take away all the sins. Now, it's up to you to live right. And what I love about God, he ain't going to force nothing on you. Now, he will let you know that it ain't right, but he's not going to force it upon you. But the love that he shared for you, if you truly love God, you're going to see that I ain't doing right. Something is not right with me. What is it, Lord? What, what, what is it? And if you pray long enough, he's going to tell you what it is. He's going to show you what it is. We might have some folks in our family, and I know we'll step on some feet, that ain't doing what we think they should do. And every time, the more we talk to them, the worse they get. But you got to keep talking to them. You got to continue to know and show them that God loves them as you love them. But God loves them more. Because see, what happened, God would allow you again to go through some things so he can show you what you really need, where you need really, really Satan get out the way because I'm trying to read for this paper. God's going to show you where you're supposed to be at. God's going to show you who you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to love. And see, we get loving folks and they, they ain't supposed to be who we're supposed to be with. But we, we, we want to love them because that's what we want. It ain't what God got for us. So after they get through busting us on our head, they would say, Lord, why I got this? Because you chose that, not me. We go through this because we choose what we go through. We don't. How often? I hear people say, I give honor to God who's first in my life. And I have an issue with that. Because for God to be first in your life, that means everything that you do, you turn it to him first. But that is not possible for us to do that because of our spirit. Our nature, we have a nature that we want to fix stuff that we can't even fix. We try to fix stuff. We, we, God, God has a sense of humor. He will let you try to fix something. He will let you try to work with it, deal with it. But as soon as you give it to God, he does what he's going to do. 
So start trying to fix what you think needs to be fixed and let God think. Sometimes we might not like what God does for us and how he does it, but, that's, but that ain't how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to say, God, I trust you, I believe you, and I love you. And whatever you do, however you give it to me, I'm willing to take it. Because I'd rather for God to give it to me than Satan to give it to me. Because if Satan give it to you, it ain't, it ain't worth five cents. It ain't worth nothing. You can think it's all of that, but at the end of the day, it ain't going to be what God has for you. Well, and then now you're going to have an attitude with God because now you have gone the other way. Yes, sir. So we still say what the love has to do with this. Well, the apostle John wrote the episode to remind Christians that about love, that God love us for us. Showing that we love one another proves that we love God. Well, 